taxes on spenders, all the great people in this economy that they're taxing to help pay for all these programs, right. then end up driving the states into deeper debt and borrow and, and increasing their borrowing costs, which are already through the sky. Christy, is that something that you would like to see? Medicare for all, free education for everybody, bigger government? I think I would like to see government invest in people. I mean, listen, I think that when you are um, faced with a country where health care costs are skyrocketing through the roof, people can't actually afford their health care, they're not getting good education because they can't afford to go to college, even though um, the fact is that you can't get a good job anymore if you only have a high school education. Look, government does have to play a role in making these things accessible for people, which plays um, well for us down the road because then you have an educated, healthy workforce. So, so yes, I do think that there's a big role for government to play. I will also also say, like so it Scott, sounds like the answer is yes then. Yes. Short answer is yes, you want all of this stuff. How come yes. you don't hear anybody talking about the cost when they bring up these items and, and yeah. free everything for everybody? Man, Alexandra sure. Cortez uh, uh, is out campaigning. She's trying to get the vote out for her party and these candidates that, that are mm -hmm. in these four uh, states tonight. But you don't hear her talking about the $32 trillion that it's going to cost for Medicare for all. Yeah, can I answer that? I mean, the answer is because you get it back in the long run. And, uh, you know, Scott uh -uh. was saying, I am also a you small get it, business you get owner. That $32 trillion. You, you sure do. Now. Again, when you have a healthier, wealthier sort of workforce who have the money to be able to give back into, um, you know, into businesses and into um, our economy. Again, as a business owner myself, here's what I know if you pay people well, if you treat them well, um, if you treat them not like robots, but actually like human beings who have lives and may sometime need to go care for an ailing parent or yeah. may need to take leave because they just had a baby. For three months, huh? Then they're going to actually, yeah, maybe three months. 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 Well, listen, I think we're going to see this intensely debated during the Democratic primary in, the, in uh, next year and the year after. And I don't think Democrats are necessarily going to lurch as far to the left as everyone is saying that they are. And you're seeing that in the states because single payer was actually on the ballot in Colorado a couple of years ago. And that state is moving left and it went down. I think you may see some Democratic governors who run maybe call for a public option, but they may not call for single payer. Yeah. And, and, and we're going because to hear a lot more it. about the cost because you can't afford it Scott what, what do you want to say here you, you, you can't afford it and, and you know the sad part Maria as far as the government's concerned you you have the lender of last resort you have the ultimate borrower the ultimate spend and it's the taxpayer I mean you can just keep hitting the taxpayer over and over again just keep hitting the button and hitting them for money and that's why these governments say oh it's no problem if yeah, we Scott, do a special that's just not based in reality I mean the truth is that when things like the $15 minimum wage are on the ballot it wins it brings Democrats to the it's polls forced. it also brings right, independents to the polls what happens to the decide the point to pay? I mean, sure, everybody wants more money in terms of their their paychecks, but but if you can't afford it, you'll have to raise taxes. Some businesses will close at some point. Look at Venezuela. Yeah, that has yeah, the, the problem, again, is that if you leave it up to businesses to decide what they're going to pay people, some of them are going to try to skirt the system and pay as little as possible. Which and is some we, won't. There so has to be some the sort they of will. minimum wage. That's right, Maria. Employees the, 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 why we have job. a minimum wage. But then those so employees that, will yeah. quit and go get a better that's job. Right. That's right. They'll go get a job down the street. Unfortunately, not everyone market. can quit and go get a better job. Again, that is why it is the role of government to actually set a minimum standard and say, hey, you know, after, for example, the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory, you have to, like, limit this to a 40-hour work week you can't pay people absolutely nothing we have to have Who's we have to agree upon some nothing. minimum standards nobody and if you give them ubi if okay. you give them universal basic income guess what christy they don't take the job anyway because they don't have to so yeah. there you go there are more job openings than people i mean there are a lot of opportunities right now if you're paying there people are a lot of opportunities nothing, right now those people will leave and they will that go get a better hope, job but that's some people point. just can't that's a free market okay. that's a free market <laughs> All right, great debate, guys. And I know this debate's going to continue uh, yep. well beyond the midterms. Thanks very much for weighing in. On Is this just an up and down vote, do you think, for President Trump going into the midterms? Is this a referendum on the president being able to get his agenda executed? I don't think that. I think no? these special elections are called special elections for a reason. There's only two candidates on the ballot. Turnout is a huge issue in August in Ohio, the week before school starts. Turning out that vote is going to be critical. And I will tell you, President Trump would win this district today and he would win it in November. That was RNC Chairwoman Ronna McDaniel earlier with me, downplaying any worries that this Ohio special election could have a referendum or be a referendum on President Trump. Is she right to the Washington Free Beacons? Liz Harrington, we go. Liz, what do you think this election's about? 
Well, I think it's a very localized race that really doesn't have that much to do with Trump because no one's talking about Trump. When you see Danny O'Connor as the Democrat uh, running here, if he's running close because he's talking about the issues that matter to the district and he's talking about trade, he's talking about these things and he's not he's not running on a far left uh platform, which I think is the really interesting thing, which we've seen when Democrats have been successful in these special elections and these races, they haven't done the resistance, anti-Trump, mm. uh, all these issues. They're, they're actually adopting a lot of Trump's issues and they're not running away from him. They're adopting the things that he was successful on. So I think these abolish ICE Democrats, the base, the far left would like to see the Democrats run on. It's not a winning uh, winning uh, thing that they have going though because you see Connor Lamb in Pennsylvania. Danny O'Connor is trying that model which is moderate and actually kind of a pro-Trump platform. Well it's interesting because it may not be a winning issue at the end of the day for the country, uh, the abolish ICE and the extreme left uh, positions, but it certainly is a winning thing for the party. You know, I take a look at people like Ohio uh, Democrat Tim Ryan wants to run for president in 2020, wants to go up against President Trump. I can't even see him getting the nomination from his party because he's not an extremist. He's not saying abolish ICE and he's doing what you're saying they are doing, and that is going along with a lot of the proposals from the Trump administration. Right, which is very successful to do with getting uh, moderate voters, but right. not successful for the Democratic base. So, they won't even kind of so he won't even pass muster with his own party then? Exactly. And I think you see this civil war going on in the Democratic Party that is literally being dragged to the left by socialists like Bernie Sanders and Ocasio-Cortez who want to abolish ICE, who, who want to raise taxes, who want Medicare for all, they want socialist style health care. That's not where the voters are and they're not, that's not how they're going to win back the white working class that they lost to Trump in 2016. I totally agree with you. So what happens with these midterm elections from your standpoint? Well, I think right now it will be telling to see what it, it all depends on the candidates that de the Democrats run. If they run on the far left, if the far left wins out, they're not going to have the blue wave. If they run moderate candidates, they will pick up seats. I mean, historically, they should be, be very successful when a party, you have unified government with yeah. Republicans. Uh, it's very likely that they'll lose seats. But if the election is only about Trump and hatred of Trump is mm. the platform, that's not successful. You need a issue-driven, issue-driven wave. Right. 2006 was the Iraq sure. War. 2010 yeah, was try Obamacare. Try telling the leadership that. Try telling Tom <laughs> Perez that. That's all I, I could say. Good to see you. Thanks right. so much for weighing in this afternoon. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Cross examining top witness Rick Gates right now. Fox News correspondent Peter Ducey live in Alexandria, Virginia, with the very latest. Peter. Maria, the Manafort defense team just got the Mueller team's star witness Rick Gates to admit that at one point he led what they are calling a secret life, which included an extramarital affair and an apartment in London with someone not his wife. It is part of the Manafort defense strategy of presenting Rick Gates to the jury as someone who lies and cannot be trusted. They got him to admit to paying off the full balance of his American Express card with Paul Manafort's money, including personal expenses, without Manafort's knowledge. And they got him to admit that it's possible he submitted personal expenses fraudulently to the Trump inaugural committee. At other points of the cross-exam, defense lawyers rattled off account balances or amounts of transfers, and Gates was not able to say which were authorized and which were embezzled. At one point, the judge, T.S. Ellis, jumped in and said in front of the whole court that Gates was offering inconsistent testimony. So what we're hearing right now from him on the stand is a lot of ums and ahs and I do not recall, which was not the case while he was being questioned by the Mueller team. Maria. All right, Peter, thank you. Peter Juicy with the latest there. This just in, breaking news, the Trump administration says it will go ahead with another $16 billion in tariffs on Chinese imports near the end of August. Now, that is on top of the $34 billion in tariffs that went into effect back in July. We'll be all over this tomorrow morning. It begins at 6 a.m. Eastern on the Fox Business Network. Join me on Mornings with Maria, 6 to 9. We're also going to follow up on Disney and Tesla tomorrow morning. Stocks are active in the extended hours. Plus, musician Lyle Lovett stopping by my show tomorrow. Join Join me on the Fox Business Network tomorrow, 6 to 9 a.m. Eastern. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks for being with us. The Five starts now.
<laughs> it is. Hey, I'm Greg Gutfeld with Candace Owens, Geraldo, Jesse Waters, and she plays hide and seek in a dollhouse. Dana Perino, <laughs> the five. <laughs> By now, you've all heard about CNN viewers.